Where were we? Hello, everybody. System Chalk here with uh, the 17th episode of Lord Stab, the Physician. Um, as usual, we'll do a little bit of a recap. Uh, we've got a few items which we don't need anymore. Uh, these are probably better as just options. <clears throat> excuse me. To um, uh, to grab some uh, some extra cash if I need it. Uh, I think we had made a decision. We did uh, wind up recruiting Spencer Hobson. However, we have built a snare and we are leaving the unnumbered stones out for people to um, to try and raid. Uh, and this is essentially just to thin out the um, this is essentially to thin out the the uh, renegades. Um, I need to decide whether or not I want to hang on to all of my edge artifacts or not. But in terms of what I immediately have access to, <clears throat> uh, I have a Furious Sliver uh, and I can once I... Well, okay, sorry, it's not immediate access uh, if, if this is the case. But in terms of what I sort of have in the hand, uh, this would be the Furious Sliver and the uh, painting. Now, I believe I cannot produce a second painting if I wind up giving it as a gift. Uh, which means that two of the four remaining troublemakers I can recruit, but it is very likely that I'm going to have to eliminate two of them as well. Connie is a prime candidate because, um, you know, uh, we already have the resentment. Now, we did learn that over the passage of time, um, sort of there can be sort of mended fences. But uh, I don't want to, I don't want to bank too much on that. So we're keeping a snare in reserve. Probably the best thing for me to handle right now would be to just simply wait and see which of the renegades start, um, which, you know, which of them start going to, um, to different uh, locations. And then that'll probably thin out the herd a little bit. Um, the main reason for wanting to do that is so that once we get a season of ambitions, we can focus on uh, sort of doing our how do I want to put it? Uh, we can focus on, on sort of um, advancing uh, towards our ascension rather than worrying about what one of four potential threats are, are going to be doing to us. Uh, before we unpause, I'm going to take a second here and just review the state of the world. So we've got a season of ardors coming up. As long as I leave Enid uh, open, we'll be able to get some contentment out of that. I'm working at the Institute to kind of keep my funds where they need to be. We're still translating. Uh, oh, that's the last of our texts. Interesting. I've got the dream slot open. I need to repair... Yes, I need to repair everything before I can go back through the peacock door. Um, we're hunting for treasures in the Rending Mountains. The unnumbered stone stones are just simply so that I can make my snares. And then if I recall correctly, I'm currently talking with the Percussigant and the Caligine, or at least they're talking with each other to preserve them for the new location. So at some point I'm going to want to rebuild that snare. But I think I can wait on that for a little while, at least. Last question would be, is there anything that I want to do dream-wise? Um, it seems to me that it's probably better for me to kind of keep these followers in the background, at least for a little while. I think traditionally what I've done is I've used them to go through the spider's door if the... Um, yeah, I believe I go through the spider's door with them if they are starting to expire. I guess the only other remaining question would be, do I want to try and... Um, you know, do I want to try and get a favor from authority, given the fact that the Suppression Bureau has got some notoriety? And there doesn't really seem to be much of a reason to do that, because I have a Caligine ready to eliminate that, uh, that threat if it comes down to it. I suppose maybe the subtle fracture, well, even then we're spending some time at the Institute. Um, I could summon a second Caligine just to get rid of the evidence, but that's probably not that big of a deal. So we'll leave things as they are. And uh, in this case here, we're obviously gonna continue pursuing whatever locations we can. Um, but here, I think probably one of my focuses is going to be either on the recruitment or the, um, I don't know, subversion of, uh, of different um, different investigators, or not investigators, um, renegades, troublemakers. So the uh, evidence has now become a bit more of a threat. Um, I can either try and get rid of the weary detective, or I can try and get rid of the evidence. I think the evidence. Well, nope. I've got an idea about that. 
and we have translated the Larkabean Codex. So, hmm. Christoph Larkabus claimed to have purchased two handwritten copies of the Codex from a family of witches on the shores of the Sea of Marmara. A third was given to the sea. The sister and witch came from the west, where they were born in two wombs, one a princess, one a monster. Nevertheless, they loved each other from birth and met in secret to seek union. Sorry, and met in secret to seek union. So I would have wanted to uh, get someone to work on, on the snare, but in this case, I think getting rid of the evidence is important here. So I'm certain that my adversary has lodged a copy of their notes elsewhere, with their solicitor, with their superior, or even with a contact in the press. This is troubling. So in this case, uh, the best option here is to get the Pregusigant out, send the tentative evidence. This saves a whole lot of time for me. So it does mean that the Pregusigant winds up sort of expiring for a little while. But um, overall, I think it's, it's a decent enough trade-off. Uh, and of course, there's always the chance that something goes awry, but that's life, right? Uh, my lover and I contend in the spaces above and beneath the flesh. I must match their intensity. Together we are brighter. And season of suspicion coming up, so it might be an idea for me to get a second location, given the fact that we're already going to have the snare. It's a little bit of a risk that I'm, I'm doing, because that does mean I'm going to have several turns in which one of those locations is exposed. But as long as I make sure that I have a snare uh, on the ground, uh, it's a little more justifiable than it, it normally would be. Okay, so we've got the Mausoleum of Wolves. This chilly monument was built long before Rome fell. Stone wolves watched the door. A chamber within was carved from rock and await fragments of the sun at its prophesied funeral procession. That procession never came, but still the dead are drawn here. So that definitely suggests that we want to bring a winter follower, or, you know, we'll have enough edge to, to take him out. So yeah, I do, I guess my big question here would be, uh, do I want to wait the 60 seconds for another, another location? I am very much inclined to do so. So, the Rending Mountains, it has been said, tear the flash of history. It has generally only been said by people like Christopher Elopoli, but still, they're a good region to find the places that daylight history does not recognize. So again, it's a risk but something of a calculated risk. It does mean that we're going to be able to make a bit more progress than we normally do. My minion has not returned. They have failed, and their blundering may have attracted attention. All right, so let's have a chat with a weary detective and send the Progusigant after them. This does mean we may lose the shifty woman, though. Actually, it almost certainly means we'll lose the Shifty Woman. So I don't think the Subtle Flaw is going to be enough for me to bring a Caligene in, but let's see what we can try and do. So a little knock. We will bring... I guess... A Forge Disciple. Nope. Sorry, Significant Forge. It's the other way around. Yeah, it works. Forge for the Smoky Spirit, summoning winter for its binding. It must know who will rule it. So the snare is uh, getting quite old. Nina prefers to close her eyes rather than look at me. She says it hurts to look. She says it with such longing that I can't take offense. So bittersweet memory, these can some... So the bittersweet memories I've talked about a couple of times, it does... It's a little bit of a double-edged sword. Um, they're really helpful for fascination. But sometimes they can uh, they can create a little bit of difficulty in the sense of actually there's one thing I can possibly do to preserve the I mean it it does come at the cost of the precussigant but oh man, another season of suspicion. So we'll have another weary detective investigating the case of the, the other one. When the great drought came, the kings of that land tried to sacrifice the princess and the witch, so they sailed across the sea. When despair took them, they flung themselves into the drowning waters, and so found the painted river, where they entered the mansus through the offices of the Red Grail. Nevertheless, the codex ends with a condemnation of the Grail. So these are the sorts of things where I don't... Um, one thing I, I like about these are, um, and for those of you that have seen the the network analysis, the network analysis 
um, that I did is based entirely on the cards, um, the cards themselves. So, for instance, um, you will have a recitation of Lost Hours. This card has winter aspect. It also has a number of other aspects, and that's the connection that gets made. Um, now, there is a way that they wind up connected. So, for instance, I believe there should be in the, once you account for everything, there should be sort of a connection with that lore with a book. And if that book winds up being connected to a location which has a certain influence, you can sort of draw the link between between the two. But again, these are just the references that exist mechanically inside of the game, which is one way of looking at Cultist Simulator, but by no means the only way. In fact, as far as a player is concerned, those relationships matter in terms of where you can put the cards, but what you and I might be interested in terms of, lie, uh, uh, in terms of lore uh, isn't really... We don't necessarily care uh, what the elements are, in some cases. Um, it's the text that's much more interesting. So if I were to do, let's say, a mind map, so if I had my, you know, let's just say for a second I had a little notebook with me and I was trying to draw connections between everything, this particular bit of lore here would be something where I would want to make the connection between, uh, I believe it's the witch and sister? Because the sister and witch is a different, no, sorry, the sister and witch. Um, so the sister and witch, which is, I believe, distinct from the witch and sister. Um, in this case, I would want to make a connection with the Red Grail and then perhaps also make a note of the condemnation. Uh, so this is a little bit less automated. This is not the sort of thing that you would run into like a Python program. Well, you could, right? Because you'd, what you'd want to do is you'd want to just find all the different names that things are referred to. But <clears throat> this is, again, why I think Cult of Simulator is such an interesting game. Um, there's a little bit less that I'm going to talk about lore-wise here. But one of the reasons why I think this game particularly works is because the type of thinking and the types of connections that you make are the sorts of things that only people can make. Uh, the sorts of leaps that you would need to make if you were to try and do some more of a technical analysis of this, you know, using some kind of a program. Um, you would definitely need to handle quite a bit of, of sort of, um, I guess, leaps, um, for lack of a better term. Um, the fact that you'll have, I've kind of talked about the different names for the doors is uh, is one great example here. <clears throat> but um, the sorts of things that you and I might take for granted, or uh, the sorts of things that will kind of create these aha moments, um, don't lend themselves towards put card A into slot B. Uh, in fact, I think that's probably why some people find this game quite frustrating, because you're used to kind of being told what to do. Um, there's not a lot of ambiguity in terms of what I need to do in Battlefield, which I enjoy very much. Uh, you have a gun, and you point it at the other guy, and you, you fire, you know, and you just push the left mouse button to do that. And I don't really need to think about the the consequences of that, or the, you know, the you know, the, the broader circumstances that have led me to this this place. Um, but when it comes to a game like cult -a Simulator, <clears throat> there can be some situations where I think the best example of this would be when you encounter the serpents in the vaults. At no point does the game ever say, you know, if you don't want to use Edge, if you don't have it or you find that an inelegant solution, you should put a knock character in there. Um, I don't believe at any point the game indicates that you, you know, that knock is how you get past that. <clears throat> it just simply says that it responds to the mother's power. And what you do is you take all of the associations between serpents and knock, and I certainly don't think I'm unique in being the only one to say, okay, well, the obvious answer here is knock. Well, maybe it isn't so obvious, but it's certainly one that leads, uh, to me at least, leads leads a lot of people to um, to that solution there. So I think probably contained inside of I've probably done this rant in this uh, playlist, no less. I think that's where um, you know the appeal of Cult of Simulator, as well as some of the sort of the frustration with the game, comes from. <clears throat> Um, I am definitely somebody who likes that, and I'm not necessarily somebody who really goes into the, the depths of the lore. So, for instance, you know, Dark Souls. Um, I'm sure it's all very interesting, but I've I've not actually really spent a lot of time 
figuring out what it all means. Um, and arguably with Cultist Simulator, you know, I have played it enough that it's hard not to know about relationships between things in Cultist Simulator, but I've never actually really sat down and worked it, worked it all out. That would be a fun video to do at some point, I think. But um, coming back to this idea in terms of how I would approach such a project, um, there are, you know, I, you kind of, for me at least, I think of, uh, there are certain books that serve certain purposes. And in this case here, uh, it does a really good job of sort of drawing these explicit connections between, um, between certain, certain concepts in the game. And we got a waking chat for our uh, trouble. Okay, nothing really for me to do with the study verb, verb right now, so it makes me a little sad that we are behind on um, on locations, but it's not a, not a lot we can do with it. Um, normally, I would be upgrading lore at this point. Okay. So this would require fascination. All right, so the formula voluptuous is the thing that we could use to do an upgrade. We'll need a glimmering first, so let's do the uh, read the sentimental literature first. If I propose to learn anything, I wouldn't be reading this stuff. The longer this lasts, the happier I'll be. Okay, the Tombs of the Shadowless Kings. We'll just set that aside. I don't think I want to spend too much more... I don't think I want to do another... Um, well, we are going to try and eliminate another bit of evidence. So I suppose I can afford one more unresolved ambiguity. Also, it's clear it would make a lot more sense for me to try and upgrade these forbidden epics rather than the, the lore. Something for me to keep in mind. Three, two, one. So perhaps we could parlay, or perhaps I could send something to ambush them. What does not kill them sometimes makes them stranger. When a hunter survives an attack by a summoned creature, occasionally they will be inspired to learn countermeasures against Mansus things, becoming mystic. Mystic hunters usually survive further attacks by summoned creatures. All right, so the weary detective has shown uh, shown they know uh, how to handle handle things. Okay, well let's um, betray and imprison the shifty woman. And of course, we got his rebellious spirit. Uh, let's use our... Re well, you know, we do kind of need to get rid of the evidence, so... Uh, the things from outside the world have many weapons. Knives and riddles fire and despair. I have weapons of my own. This will usually, but not always, work. All right, and we got a second weary detective. So I'm definitely causing myself a lot of grief as far as... Uh, as far as the law is concerned. I've locked this one away safely. When their screaming and raving subsides, I will subdue them properly. So we can't do the same trick as last time. Um, we've got more than one weary detective on the board now. We don't really have a lot of ways to... Well, actually, that's not true. Um... Let's deal with the super detective. Eldridge, if you'd please... Unless this hunter has some unusual protection, they're already dead, but their demise will attract attention. We're gonna lose the snare soon. Okay, let's be careful with our dread. 
I pass the time, I've been inclined to tears and afterwards inclined to laughter. Meanwhile, the world continues. So one other thing that I can do is go through the stag door because we are going to need to summon another percussigant. Uh, in the meantime, as far as study goes, uh, we were going to upgrade the formula voluptuous, so certain words beg to be spoken. It is tempting to spend time in their consideration. Tempting, and perhaps useful. Alright, so we know the net. Oh god! <laughs> uh, we're not having any luck. So, human, uh, human sanity is fragile, and this thing is potent. So we'll see exactly what happens when it consumes my reason. Uh, my summoning escaped my control, where it'll wreak havoc, no doubt. I suppose at least I didn't get rid, uh, didn't lose a, a follower, but... So, um... I could try the Rose Pearl Dust. I think the right of the, the Mother's Mercy will allow me to... Rose Pearl Dust might be a little, um, a little too light. Okay, so... Scaptodon Fang is definitely overkill. I think we'll wait it out. But I am exposed as far as the... Oh! <laughs> I've got more than one Tomb of the Shadowless Kings. I, yeah, wasn't really paying attention there. Uh, well, that's fine. Um, oh, but I do need to decide what I'm doing with the work verb. Um, let's make some money. Let's explore the city for now. We might actually, in this case, uh, hiring some people to do some of these other jobs might be a good idea. <clears throat> so this is a hulking fellow. All right. The events of that night will live long in your memory. And for days, the newspaper questions resident about, residents about the district. So we've got a rising heat, uh, our reason was turned into dread, and we got some notoriety for our trouble. So this is going to, this is going to hurt quite a bit. Um, we have a season of despair coming up. In Actually, it, it's possible that I can bring someone into the cult. The only thing I have to get rid of the bittersweet memory right now, <clears throat> you know, we can spend the money. My minion has returned with a prisoner. Oh, well done, Eldridge. All right. So, um, I have a couple of choices to make, I suppose. Well, there's really only the one. Uh, we know the evidence is going to be a problem. So yeah, let's just bring another body into the church. This one is ready. And then we'll have to get rid of the evidence when, you know, when the opportunity arises. It's difficult to control oneself. Uh, raw profit might work here. The Ascent of Knives is called the Sharp Stair and the Mother of Mirrors and the Feast of the Grail. If one is to look beneath the stair, as I did last night in my dreams, one understands the last name. It draws a tithe of blood from the feet of those who ascend. And Pauzai, some shape like men, many shape like women, wait beneath the glass of the stairs to satisfy their hunger. I did not approach. I made no sound. I only observed. Okay, our first test for the, uh, the upgrade. This is for Glimmering. And let's go back to the stag door. I'm not quite ready to um, use this follower. In fact, I might use it in the experimentation. <clears throat> Need some money 
actually. Um, the rising heat won't do that much for me, but let's try the raw profit. So. Nope, that doesn't help me. Uh, what was it? Fed not. I think it's knock and moth. It feels wrong, but yep. Someone, one of the more bewildering creatures of the Red Grail. Grail for the raw profit source, and a little moth for its chaos addiction. I genuinely don't remember how much moth it has, so this may not be helpful in destroying evidence. But I, I don't have a lot of options right now. Before they speak the words, the novice must sharpen a knife and, uh, so it can separate a drifting thread. If it be not sharp enough, it will be the worse for them heart pumps more strongly today. So if we want to use the bittersweet memory, we can wait 35 seconds. There should be constant activity in the talk verb right now, though. So I think my first priority right now is to get another trap down. Because if the season of ambitions comes up, it's basically already too late. We do have a little protection in the sense that uh, four... Uh, sorry, um... Three of the four locations are ones that I'm willing to give up, but um, let's not uh, let's not tempt fate. I'm going to actually, you know what? Um, now is not a bad time for me to clear out some some junk at Oriflams, so we will sell the August Stone. Uh, this oddity is probably worth something, but it's hard to be sure. We're not really desperate for money, so we, uh, I'm not too worried about getting it, but getting money rather than, um, you know, turning money into prisoners is probably not a bad idea right now. Okay, we'll avoid the fascination if we can. So the rupture lets me do a summoning, so this is good. In my sleep, I ran my fingers along the ridged edges of the stag door scars. Our company it was that shattered it, Girby says suddenly, before the gods who were flesh, the mantis was forbidden to mortals. We were the first no. He begins again to weep his molten tears. I wish that we had not. I wish that I had died in the world. I've forgotten what else he said, but I remember the shape of the fissures in the stag door, and for all of today, the doors will fear my touch. Okay, uh, this is a puzzle with missing pieces. If I find those pieces, uh, I might find those pieces in odd corners of scholarship. Surrender passion, which might occasionally be damaged, or use a Sanctuary or the Open Soul skill. So I don't have Open Soul. Uh, in this case, we'll risk some Passion. And then for the Dream Slot, let's head back to the Stag Door. And this is because I am going to want to summon... I may potentially want to summon a, um, a Percussigant. So if this ever reaches trial, I will be in serious danger. Even if this Hunter is disposed of, another might find their notes. I'm just trying to think. I don't think any of these are going to have enough um, enough heart to summon. So we'll sell another item. Um, well, let's see what happened with the raw profit. It enters the world one limb at a time, questing like a serpent, cawing like a crow, throbbing like a vein. It will cuddle close against my leg if I let it, and afterwards I will have to dispose of my shoes. Alright, what is this thing? Okay, eight moths should be good for destroying evidence. Let's get the percussigant in. Percussigant, merciless and merry, heart will bring it, edge will constrain it. Sometimes it divides, sometimes it unites, sometimes she speaks words of warning, sometimes he advises on appetite. Its prophecies are confusion, their whispers confound. A perilous snare. Rivals are cautious, they don't prowl the streets like hunters. To defeat one, we must prepare a trap and await our opportunity. Edge, forge, moth, or winter are useful for creating snares. Once created, a snare can be used when an independent makes an attempt on any vault. Total lack of interest. No one is impressed. The auctioneer's gavel bangs. My item is sold, but for a sum so trifling, 
as to not be worth recording. Alright, so I am going to need to make some choices about what I do with some of these betrayed followers. My followers had a perilously cunning uh, ambuscade. Uh, one will almost, one that will almost certainly succeed. So good work, Eldridge. I suppose the question now is, do I want to do anything with the weary detective, or do I want to get rid of the evidence first? My inclination is to try and get rid of the evidence first. So my scheme will most likely succeed. There's always a chance that something will go awry. Although I forgot to betray the follower. I could not have asked for a better opportunity here. So, trembling heat. Possibility of sparks. Oh, wait. Uh, right, well, we're already summoning the Percussigant, so this will be good for the Paladin. Oh. Gearby was weeping again. I scooped up his molten tears in my cupped palm. In the dream, my skin peeled and blistered, but only in the dream. So here, I'm going to go to the white door. This is a precautionary measure for the, uh, the possibility that we may go to trial. So, in my dreams, I know the path to the white door through the bounds. But the path is thronged with the dead that pass that way. I will need health to resist their chill. Um, auctioneer's gavel bangs. Sold for nothing. Um, I'm gonna risk the passion. Well, sorry. Risking the passion. I'm going to risk it and use the passion. I'm getting a little impatient on my summons. I followed my passions through the labyrinth, and here I am at its heart. The heart of the labyrinth is a black and hollow place, charred like wood. Passion has been permanently damaged. Oh, we get fascination for that trouble. All right. This is a puzzle with missing pieces. I might find those pieces in the odd corners of scholarship. Risk your health or use a prisoner. Well, we've been pretty unlucky so far, so we'll use that unfortunate prisoner to clear things out. And one last trip to Oriflames to get a little cash. I'm succeeding! All right. Now's the time to clear out the Hulking Fellow, send the Raw Prophet off to destroy the damning evidence. I wait word. Summoning will obey my wishes for now. The Precusigant, it loves the Sistrum's shiver, it loves the thrump of the Tympanos, it recalls with fondness the flaying of Marsyas, and so it will not, will not, will not stop dancing. Okay, I'm going to do one last summon. Uh, we've actually lost quite a bit on this. It's been a very active round, but uh, we've been treading water in terms of progress a little bit. So I am going to do a summon for a Caligi, and this is more just to have sort of something in the in the pocket for, um, uh, you know, for other evidence. Uh, Forge for the Smoky Spirit, summoning winter for its binding. It must know who will rule it. And then we'll be back on the, on the, um, sort of the train for the, um, uh, the Institute. Now, this will probably be a very inconvenient uh, season of visions. I say this because uh, I suspect right around the time that we finish the the upgrade, you know, the passion is going to turn into the the fascination, uh, and that's going to become available right around the time that it appear, like the the um, the season divisions happen. So not a lot we can do about that, but we do have a fleeting reminiscence that will last long enough. A minion is returned. The evidence has been destroyed. I am a little safer, so we will betray betray the follower. This one must serve another purpose now. Into the cupboard they go. 
And this weary detective actually doesn't really have much threat to us. We've been generating a lot of notoriety, but we don't have a season of suspicion coming up. There really isn't a very, there isn't a very strong reason for saying why we need to eliminate this individual right now. So we're gonna hang on to them for a bit. And in this case, we pretty much inevitably go to the Lodge of the Sage Knight. So glimmering, not great, but my emotions run higher than usual. There are things I'll never understand, and those things will always be precious, but just now I'm closer to them. I recall my dream. This was the Lodge of Blue Silk flapping in the winds of the bounds at the Mansus Edge, and here was its mistress, who welcomed me as she welcomes all travelers. Company's nice, she confided, but I still miss my Christopher. Ten years! Ten years and not enough. But we could not have been long together, not without touching each other. And you know what occurs when a man long lies with a long woman. Or perhaps you don't. I hope you don't. I won't tell you just in case. I'll give you a tiny gift. Okay. Um, so the need for the uh, favor from authority has vanished, uh, you know, with the, with the raw prophet doing its job. So... At some point, we will uh, start repairing the Wildering Mirror and the Watchman's Glass and such. Um, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, there's a lot for the talk verb to... There's a lot happening with the talk verb right now. Um, I'll leave Dream alone for a little bit. Murmurings in the audience. For whatever unlikely reason, my item has caught the fancy of the bidders. And I've locked this one away safely. When they're screaming uh, and raving subsides, I will subdue them properly. So we're pretty much always going to have notoriety on the table. Um, but I don't mind it because certainly we've been quite a bit more active in pursuing uh, pursuing the um, you know the elimination of evidence and uh, and other other inconveniences. So, um, I could talk with the Percussigant and or the Raw Prophet. Or I can use the talk verb for the things I really want uh, to do. Um, I don't see the, a lot of value in making another snare quite yet. Although I should get a little bit of a better rotation going on those. Uh, I think at this point here, probably repairing the mirrors is my best option. I do also need to start getting some more bronze spintrea. Um, before I do any of that though, let's chat with Madame Duchet to get another commission. Oh, also, I think I've been sitting on this for a very long time, so I could have actually turned that in with Jannings uh, some time ago. investigation. Let's turn in with Jannings. I have what was requested. I've received the currency of the secret world and my patron has let tantalizing information slip. Okay, so Valsine is kind of my go-to repairer. Not that Valsine does anything special, just I usually have Valsina at the top. You can begin to repair this, but it will take at least a bronze spintrea to purchase the necessary materials. Also, it occurred to me it is uh, advantageous to leave the dream slot open, given uh, the possibility of, um, of the fascination appearing. However, we know that in 16 seconds the Season of Visions is going to uh, appear, and it's going to take at least 24 seconds for the... Um, for the results of the research to appear. So we're almost certainly going to get hit by the, the Season of Visions. I may want to try and do something that generates a, a fleeting reminiscence or a dread. Of course, dread I gotta wait 16 seconds for. Uh, either way though, um, it's gonna be something that, uh, that I need to contend with. So the Mausoleum of Wolves. Did the sun ever come here when its death was pronounced? Perhaps that pronouncement was premature. In any case, if we usurp its progress, we'll have to face avalanches, furious ghosts, and a door sealed by adept architects. Let's be ready. So the drawback here about bringing the raw prophet instead of the Caligine is uh, the fact that we are not necessarily going to be able to handle the avalanche. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the game will kind of tell us what we need for the, the challenges but I need to be prepared for a tough run. 
Not all of the Forge's children are bright. Its offcuts and its bastards gather in the bounds like hammer scale in the cracks of a smithy floor. Here comes one now. So if I'd like, I can do another commission, um, but let's go to the Institute first. There's a dark and clinging smell to the Institute halls that never quite leaves one. Perhaps it is the paints, perhaps it is the patients, and perhaps it is something in the walls. Coming up next, a season of ambition, so this might be a chance for us to use the snare. There's that vision. <laughs> I've increased my mastery of the succulent lore, by which we call uh, its aspect Grail. Okay, so there's nothing I can do with the dream slot. We are starting to get some expiring prisoners, so let's go through the spider's door. Uh, just so that we can make the most. These will turn into evidence if we don't uh, if we don't use them. So, the spider's door is always thirsty. Always, the blood I have given leaks and threads and spills through the skin of the world. And the door drinks it, and a moment's satisfaction swells. It's opening until I can pass. Uh, now, study wise, what is it going to take for the forbidden epic? Erudition and glimmering. So, bringing this up to the next level isn't that hard. Actually, we've, I've already got both, so I don't exactly want unresolved ambiguities, but it's the easiest thing for me to generate right now, and I have a lot of forbidden epics, so I'll work with it. All right, the expedition continues. Our expedition plans for the next challenge. It'll consume funds. I can add funds now, or I could send another follower. So the high passes, bleak and gray-green slopes, lift the eye to a distant snow edge sky... Uh, to, sorry, two distant snow edge sky straining peaks. It'll be a devil of a job to find anything here in there. Forge will sustain us. Winter will shield us. Notice we don't have any forge or any winter right now. So we'll add the Caligene for the forge. Then we'll have to add one of my forge followers next. That means that I need to find a way of dealing with... Um, so I'll, I'll have to add the money at some point. Next up is the fretful dead. So normally uh, winter would have been helpful both for the dead and for the... Um, for the high passes, but again, because I brought the raw profit instead of the percussigant, I'm sort of up against uh, I'm, I'm up against the ideal party for this vault as opposed to the ideal party for minimizing the number of summonings that I need to do. Finally, the warded door. Uh, in this case, if we get the forge for the high passes, we so actually I guess in the grand scheme of things. We either double up for the Forge and the uh, the Fretful Dead, the High Passes and the Fretful Dead, or the High Passes and uh, the Warded Door. Either way, uh, we will add uh, either Tristan, Laidlaw, or Velsine, and uh, we'll just need to make sure that we add the funds and the the edge for the um, the uh, summons when the time comes. I actually feel like things have slightly calmed down now. Uh, we we do have the season of ambitions, which is going to be a little hair raising. But other than that, I kind of get to breathe. My follower needs a bronze spintrea or better to complete their task. So. Our practical souls, strong and forged, will probably be fine. Tristan, make that a certainty. Our forge skills represent plenty of expertise. We'll almost certainly make it through. And I've done some good. My patients are quieter than when I began. Okay, let's... Um, I'm going to try and get another... Uh, another um, bronze Pentreya. So we will do the commission for Dr. Adin. Looks like Connie is going to... Try something nasty. Oop, another season of ambition, no less. Mirror is repaired. It shines again as it did once before. So, um, this is a little inconvenient, but we can still... Actually, in this case, having the extra locations helps me out. Um, if Connie goes after either one of these, that's fine, because we'll always have a replacement for what we need. Um, the one regret I have here is that obviously an extra unresolved ambiguity would have been nice to move it up to a Vagabond's map, but you know, that's life. So Eldridge, um, could you create a snare? 
And so Pounding Airs, this would be good if I felt that I needed to summon another Percussigant, which I don't. The Chamber of Ways, I think, can sometimes give me fascination, which is the last thing I need right now. And as I'm fond of pointing out, the Mallory does produce uh, something like a, a tangible item. So my preference has definitely been to go through it. I will confess, so in previous playthroughs, I really didn't like the idea of sacrificing people to go through the, uh, the Spider's Door. Uh, either because it was inconsistent with the character that I was playing, or it just seemed to be that if you were going to do a sacrifice, going to the Mansus isn't necessarily the most interesting thing. Well, sorry, it is actually a very interesting thing that you can do, but it, maybe it's not the best thing you can do with a sacrifice. You know, if you're able to bring a summon, you've got something that you can take into a vault with you. So the question is, what does the Spider's Door give you? And to be completely honest, I'm not 100% sure I'm thrilled with what I get from this compared to the white door or the peacock door. Um, so the stag door is kind of my bread and butter as far as summons. I can get forge, I can get edge, I can get knock. And one of the things that's nice about the forge and the knock is that those are ones that I'll see right at the stag door as opposed to the, you know, the ascent of knives. I think most of the time I can get something pretty useful. But, um, you know, every once in a while I'll get a winter that I need to deal with. Um, even then, you know, winter influence isn't the end of the world because you can summon a Caligeen out of it still. And in that case, the Caligeen will turn into Forge, not, um, not Dread. Or, sorry, not Winter, which then decays into Dread. The White Door is helpful for the favor from Authority. Uh, you can also get that from the Peacock Door. Um, but when it comes to the spider door, uh, so, you know, the Mallory gives you the physical object. The Chamber of Ways really hasn't impressed me that much in terms of what I can get. So let's see here. Yeah, so the wrong door is very good for knock uh, influence, but I've never really needed that much knock influence. Um, whereas here, an unresolved ambiguity is actually really helpful. So, uh, in the Mansus, the hours drive one against another. As the struggles are resolved, they iron out the impossible, exalt the possible, tie the fraying braids of what has been into one golden ribbon of future. Everything is resolved, history becomes the past. There are, however, exceptions. So one of the reasons I'm going back on the um, sort of the commission run is that's really good for generating erudition and glimmering, which of course are inputs to uh, secret histories upgrades. Those secret history upgrades are going to be going into eventually vagabond maps, at least in you know, uh, assuming that I haven't already got the other books to be translating. So uh, as long as my finances are okay, I. I kind of have a, a bit of a priority in terms of getting that uh, that done. Just taking a look at my passion, I didn't realize how much that loss affects me. So if I want to do a pure passion uh, painting, I have to like give up everything. Now, something for me to keep in mind next time I summon something nasty. Last night in the Mansus, I visited the Mallory, from whose hammerings and crucibles one does not emerge unchanged, and for nine beats my heart ceased while it entered the fires of the forge, and the passions of the forge entered into it. I woke with the dawn, and its poor divided colors inspire memories of the forge's passion for the sun, of the vagabond's curse, of the grail's deep longing. So many half-memories. <clears throat> Alright, so Follower Betrayed is expiring in about 60 seconds, so let's get... Another trip to the spider door. Everything else I'm going to leave alone for now. I do eventually want to go uh, through the peacock door now that I've got the mirror, but as always, it's a question in terms of what I need to give up. So, uh, we need to use erudition. Now, this is a bit of a shame because this glimmering may not last long enough. Uh, I don't think I can stick that in there. No. So, I can be cheeky. No, I can't be cheeky and put it in there. All right. It's hard to put influence in the right spots. Frost guard and shivering, we've made it through the mountains. I hope I have a snare on the table in enough time. So fascination's dealing with itself, that's good. Something converted. A scheme to murder a hunter is afoot. All right, that's a bit of a shame, but here is another who would ascend before me. The 
The worst thing that can happen to me right now actually is if the uh, if the attempt actually succeeds. <laughs> Uh, anyways, let's grab the funds uh, for starters, because that's the sort of thing that can just wipe out the, the expedition. Okay, so this glimmering is not going to last long enough. Again, unless I find some way of, you know, preserving the, the glimmering, but I'm pretty much out of options here. Uh, a painting might might do the trick, actually. I finished the manuscript, so substantial investigation. So I don't think I can just take a glimmering. I think I actually need to commit to the painting. So uh, there's two options that I've got here. I can try and remove, or like I can try and do something that'll earn money, which is actually very tempting here. Um, or I can take advantage of the Rose Pearl. It's actually hard to remember which paintings I've created. Um, in this case, I'm going to throw all the passion in. You never know, this might be a living. So I'm going to start with a Glimmering. But that's only to keep the, keep the length. Or, sorry, keep the duration. I am going to do one of the special paintings. Assuming I don't mess it up, which happens often. Well, I mean, I suppose I could use it here, but no, we're going back to the Mallory. And an incandescent change follows fire. A 15th order influence. This can might be the personal attention of an hour. This can be used in some rites to summon minions. Last night in the Mansus, I visited the Mallory, from whose engines and avenues one does not emerge unchanged. I watched the processes of sunset, and I entered the amber joy and the white joy and the blue joy, and I was subjected to the enlightenments of calcination, and the forge of days touched me with her burnished fingers. And I rise from my bed with the utter knowledge that all nights, all nights, all nights must end. Okay, so we can now provide the glimmering, uh, and I can provide the input for my painting. So I can try and make the Forge painting with the... No, hang on. Um, it is not the Iotic Essence, but it's the Blitter Black Salts. That's a pigment. So I could do a Heart painting, I could do a Forge painting, I could do a Moth painting. Uh, the Iker Vitreus is not a pigment, but Refulgan is. Ah, actually, no. It, there's a very obvious um, choice here. Now this is going to produce fascination for me. But it's worth it. So we're going to do uh, Mantra of Ascent. We've got the fleeting reminiscence, so now's a good time for me to, to do this. If I can get uh, some vitality now, that would not be a bad option now either. All right, rivals are cautious. They don't prowl the streets like hunters. To defeat one, we must prepare a trap and await our opportunity. strength is considerable. These dead, with their avid, pitiful eyes, have died once already. Their hold on the waking world is weak. We should be able to send them down into darkness, but we must take care. Victor, please tip the scales. The dead are pale as inverse shadows. They move like cobwebs in a breeze. Almost certainly they can't stand before us. We'll send them mumbling back into the shadows of the world. Uh, sorry, of the wood, yes. Okay, so... We're committed to the lantern painting. Colors of the night. I could spend money on better paints, or perhaps I could find more exotic pigments. It's actually just in time for that stare to, snare to expire. I didn't really keep track of the time, but good to know, I suppose. Follower has set a perilously cunning ambuscade, one that will almost certainly succeed. Let's turn in the commission first. I have what the doctor requested. Here's another who would ascend before me. Wait. Am I missing something here? What do they try and do? I guess it's because there was already this... Um, 
there's already this effort going on. All right, that's fine. I'm not going to complain about not having to deal with a, a threat. All that I am, am is here. This will show uh, to best advantage in utter darkness, like us all. I received the current of the currency of the secret world, and my patron has let tantalizing information slip. Okay, so erudition's looking good. Um, Count Channing's... Sorry, I can't remember. No, okay, we're not working on a commission right now, so let's get one. Uh, the Good Count's fraternity in Europe is seeking particular research. I do need to start going back to the Institute because our funds have been slowly drying up. I made something unique, something extraordinary, something I will never dare to exhibit publicly. This cannot possibly ever see daylight. It will earn no funds. But I've got a contentment, a glimmering, a fascination. Oh, no, an intensity of radiance. Okay, that's a little bit different. door in the eye. He came for, uh, from the glory and we cannot help but see. So it's not better than the... Or sorry, we need to repair the crack watch, watchman's glass before its ability goes up. But it's another lantern tool if I need it. Uh, okay, so obviously the temptation is to do a commission for Madame Bichet, but there's always going to be another reason to do something that's not about making money. I need to make the money. Um, oddly enough, we did not... Um, for some reason, I really thought we were going to get a uh, fascination. All right, and he would like a commission on hearts. So the commission on hearts is the sort of thing that might get me a vitality. I think probably what I want to do right now... Uh, so I either want to level up the intensity of radiance because... Um, Lantern influence is something that I will eventually need. I don't have any immediate use for it, so instead, let's bring somebody else into the cult. This one is ready. And I think I'm just going to have to pay up for the... the um, health. The expedition continues. Our expedition plans for the next challenge. It will... Cons oh, hang on. The dead are more like wind than flesh, but it doesn't do to underestimate the wind. Just now, they are terror a terror-fanged hurricane of pale shadow. Fall back. Fall back. Okay, so the good news is we didn't seem to lose anyone. We do need to spend more money, though. And I am going to need to... Use another body. Spider's door is always thirsty. Always. The blood I have given leaks in threads and spills through the skin of the world. The world uh, and the door drinks it, and a moment's satisfaction swells its opening until I can pass. Before they speak the words, the novice must sharpen a knife so it can separate a drifting thread. And it be not sharp enough, it will be the worse for them. Okay. Talk verb. Still lots of things to do. I don't see a lot of value in speaking with the heart followers because I've got a combination of mystique and notoriety. Um, but I can speak with Malsine about repairing the Watchman's Glass, which requires a Silver Spintrea. <clears throat> may give me breathing space, but it may ultimately bring the Suppression Bureau to my door. Oh, all right. Well, so this is currently an in, this is currently an ingredient, um, but uh, it will eventually decay into notoriety. So this is actually one of, uh, in my opinion, human corpses wind up being one of the more um, difficult sort of, um, one of the more difficult things to deal with. If you turn them into, like, so if you do a summoning with them, they generally turn into something that will leave uh, influence that turns into dread, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if you ignore them, then they'll last for 60 seconds and then turn into notoriety. And then generally, the way that corpses get generated also produces notoriety. So it's like having 360 seconds of notoriety 
um, plus the one that you've generated already. But again, we know how to deal with this. Uh, the one bit of good news is that we don't actually have any, there's no more um, suppression bureau uh, figures running around. It did also occur to me that with the study verb, as much as I would like to be upgrading things like the forbidden epics, I'm not really turning in works right now, so we can get fresh air and exercise, and that will help me with the uh, keep the costs down for treatment. So I suppose things could be worse. This uh, episode will go a little bit longer just because I'd like to complete the expedition before I I wrap it up. Again, lots of lots of stuff happening, lots of losses happening actually, but um, not as much in terms of uh, fulfilling sort of the goals we've set for ourselves. Uh, sadly, I'm going to have to get rid of the weary detective. <laughs> This gentleman would much rather be left alone with his pipe and his illustrated London news, but now he's mewed up in some wretched hole in the ground. Okay, well, if I would like to... I mean, uh, under some circumstances, a favor from authority is helpful here, but I, I'm not going to have any evidence coming after me for a while, so back to the Mallory. And another aotic essence. The late, in the later operations of the forge, the Madrigard yields to the true forge of days, and the essence begins to redden. Someday, perhaps, it will not, but for now, we have this. Last night in the Mansus, I... I visited the Mallory, from whose fires one does not emerge unchanged. The forge's light fell upon me, and my heart boiled. And when I woke, my blood burnt within me, so that I had to shed it in a cup before it overwhelmed me. And lo, ten drops of it were not blood, exactly, unless it be the blood of the sun. Perhaps I found a cup, and the blood is not mine. The forge sears memory. So I think I'm going to hang on to the weary detective for... Well, it's, it's going to be a close call. I'll leave it open for now, and if we don't have a better use for the weary detective, we'll we'll use him as a path to the door. All right, my follower needs a silver spintrea or better to complete their task. The expedition continues. We did get rid of the dead, so when the dead return to us, they use what matter they can uh, if their bodies are gone. Dust, rust, cobwebs, scraps, and tatters. Now that we've broken them, these tatters are all that remain. Okay. There's the notoriety from the corpse. Uh, we've still got the funds. We've got the forge, so we don't need to tend to the expedition for the next little while. I've got my fresh air and exercise. And I suppose at some point it would be nice for me to focus on glimmering and air addition. Under normal circumstances, it'd be nice to try and get another unresolved ambiguity. I just don't really think the glimmering and the erudition is going to last long enough for me to be able to pull that off. The erudition will, but the glimmering, I suspect it's going to take too long. Again, that was kind of poor planning on my part. Um, sorry, I'm just taking a second to think if there's anything else I'd want to try and do. I mean, I think I'll, I'll still do it. History is less certain than we are taught. I can learn from the study of its blurred edges. So even if this doesn't turn out, I'll still be up the erudition. It's better than letting both expire for no reason. So I'm particularly curious about what's going to happen with the season of ambitions. If I get a chance to eat Douglas, I'll be happy. Well, sorry. The unnamed weary detective. Nope, Zachary's in the way. So. Mirror is repaired. It shines again as it did once before. Now may not be a bad time for me to think about um, building another snare. Just trying to think if there's anything else I can do with a talk verb at the moment that would be worthwhile. And I think the answer is no. 
Well, sorry, that's not entirely true. The one thing I can try and do is recruit another uh, another renegade, but because I'm not doing that, uh, getting another prisoner would not be a bad idea either. That's something the Grail can do. Well, the first thing I want to do is talk with Dr. Adim about the commission. And I do want to repair my finances, so I think, unless I can come up with a better excuse, I think going back to the Institute, while it might be not quite as interesting as some of the other options, is a necessary one. Okay, let's see what they try and do. Dr. Adim would like a Lantern Commission. And let's... Okay, for a precaution, let's get Eldridge to work on another snare. And then we'll get uh, Saliba or Rhaenyra to get us another another body for the for the spider door. We'll almost certainly shatter this warded door. A blaze of Radiance. Okay, so this is going to be something that eventually becomes um, fascination if I don't uh, otherwise use it. So... Every color has grown bright as new dye, but now all of them begin to bleed towards white. Last night in the Mansus, I visited the Mallory, from whose impulses and rotations one does not emerge unchanged. There are many radiances there, for the fires and, uh, and the forge and her names and her instruments. But one radiance lingers behind them all like a fading uh, music, the last light of the sun in splendor, shed in the moments of his division, here where the forge is strongest. Now that I have awoken, I see that radiance still. Okay. Um, hmm. It doesn't make a lot of sense to betray this f or to use this follower right now. I think we'll just cure the affliction and then figure out what we want to do with the dream slot later. It's really tricky to get the funds back up given what I'm up to right now. All right. Well, so one of the th one of the more delicate um, problems for me is <clears throat> if I so if I eliminate someone, or if I um, so I can't currently bring Connie into the cult because of the resentment. So if I fail, or if I succeed, I'm not exactly permanently, but I'm definitely I'm closing. I'm pretty close to closing off the option of bringing them into the cult. So I'm operating on the hypothesis that I've only got two things that I'm going to be able to bring someone into the cult with. So by eliminating Zachary, my options to bring people in will be Natalia and Douglas, unless Connie you know, tries to make nice. That's just a factor that I want to kind of keep in mind uh, when when deciding when to use the snare. But I did build the snare for a reason. So, uh, but it does also suggest that I should probably start bringing some people into the into the cult earlier. Uh, okay, another season of ambitions coming up as well. Uh, I don't think it'll trigger. I don't think it'll trigger though because this is on the board. All doors must open as all lives must end. This door has found its end here today. And... Oh no! No! <laughs> uh, that was too slow with my erudition, so we lost everything. Alright, well this is good news. Um, we will actually eat one of the followers. I wonder how long I've been messing that one up. Time alone in a quiet room with a living mind. That's all I need. All right, treasures lie before us. Good news there. 27 seconds, we will have a new snare. Studies have been stymied for now, so really nothing to show for that. I do have my health back, which is good. And let's leave the dream slot alone for a little bit. Am 
survival seeks tools and lore for their own ascension. I prepare, uh, if I prepare to snare, I can try to set an ambush for my rival to defeat their expedition and even injure them. All right, so this is my replacement. I have drunk the light of their mind. It thrills and fills me. The marks brighten in me. The fourth mark is the light that is found in the eyes, but it is very subtle. Most can see it only when the lamps are extinguished or the night is very dark. Although when I open my eyes very wide, more light leaks out. I am growing thinner. So uh, now, so I don't lose, sorry, I kind of don't lose my momentum on this. I am going to start being a bit more serious about bringing in um, prisoners. <laughs> of course, this erudition comes right at the time uh, I needed it. So you know what? Um, as silly as it is, uh, I am going to, I'm going to try again just because I do have uh, erudition available. I want to be a little mindful of the potential for fascination. For instance, I do want to do a summoning at some point. Or not a summoning, a, um, a recruitment at some point, just to avoid this fascination. But um, otherwise, we'll be fine. The notoriety, um, this will be still sticking around, as will the um, as will the, the notoriety from the expedition. But, I mean, that's that's life. Like, I'm, <laughs> I, I just got to kind of live with... Um, with the fact that occasionally the Suppression Bureau is going to want to meddle in my affairs. Okay. The coming of the wolf. The whispering of the dead is quiet, but another sound echoes in the mausoleum. A faint descending howl, like metal tearing in the hull of a ship, dropping in pitch until it churns our bones. It could almost be the wind, but it is not. We should not stay long here. The chill in the air deepens until our skin crisps with ice. At the core of the mausoleum is a white marble bowl upon a granite plinth. It is filled with snow whose touch burns the skin, and buried in it items of note. Were they concealed here, or were they offerings? Nothing beside remains. So, thank you, Victor. Thank you, Tristan. A lot more people than I would... Actually, as far as a, an expedition is concerned, there's quite a few people here. We don't normally have this many. And, of course the ever important books. So, we've got the Velshorn inscriptions in Greek. We've got more wolf snow. Sorry, I should be reading these out. Hundreds of matching lines in Greek and Frisian poetry copied from a wall similar or identical to the inscriptions Cal Velshorn discovered in Halicarnassus. If you speak Greek, you can use this as a key to Frisian. So I completely forgotten we already got our Frisian lessons with Azim. Or wolf snow. I'm assuming that the wolf here is the wolf divided just because of all of the winter and uh, uh, edge associations. But I, like, the thing is, is that like wolves also come up in other contexts. Um, so I think I'm pretty sure the wolf divided is winter and edge. I should double check that. Um, I will read this when I translate it. Uh, this is an Aramaic work, more wolf snow. Yet more wolf snow, far too cold to ever melt in anything but the hottest noonday sun. It will very gradually consume human flesh. And a second glory, work by Juseth, the priest and hermit scholar in Deep Mandiac. Okay, so uh, this has definitely been an extended episode. I am going to set up the uh, next expedition. So the Tombs of the Shadowless Kings, a rearing outcrop of lion-colored rock, laborers carved tombs for the first kings of this land. Those kings had hoped to be immortal, and perhaps one of them is. The others lie among their trinkets. Hereditary order of guardians watches closely. So it would seem to me that Forge and Edge are at least two that I need to, um, you know, I need to, to hang on to. I think I'm going to go back to the traditional combo of Percussigant and Caligine if we lose the Raw Prophet. You know, a shame, but that's life. We must penetrate the mountains, pass the guardians, and brave the curse the Shadowless Kings left behind. Perhaps we will find treasures. So the other one, of course, is taken up with... Actually, you know what? Um, it is already a, a late episode, but let's see if the snare works. So I do need to get rid of the Consciousness of Radiance. Oh, I'm not going to have the option to, so 
We will dodge the fascination. I'll, I think I'll just get rid of it using the dream verb. But. Our snare succeeded. My rival has fallen into our trap. They'll try to retreat to lick their wounds. Setback for rival. Ah, so it didn't take them out. My rival has met with a misfortune. They've been scarred by their defeat. They will be angry with me. Uh, three scars of the same type will kill any mortal. My god. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Uh, I really made a mistake by bringing this many renegades if I have to get three scars of the same type. It's going to be really hard to ascend. <laughs> um, so yeah, that definitely makes the... Okay, so with that information in mind, um, definitely recruiting should be a much higher priority just so I can minimize the number of people who hate me. Um, if it's two and two, I have essentially now committed to Natalia and Douglas being the two that I bring in, and Connie and Zachary are the two that I try and get rid of. But what it means is there's now going to be two people who are um, potentially fighting with me to, uh, as far as the season of ambitions is concerned. And so that means that the uh, opportunities to use prisoners to advance my ascension are very very precious so yes i can i can do something to you know limit these numbers um, but it does mean that i'm going to need to put quite a bit of uh, i'm going to put quite a bit of effort into um, keeping and maintaining this so basically i should always have a prisoner ready to go um, i can use them in the in the spider's door that's fine but I need to find, I need to make sure that I've got something ready to go if the Season of Ambitions turns out uh, in my favor. If I don't, then I'm going to lose a mark. And again, it's going to take a really long time to fix that. So we'll add the raw profit. Um, so yes, we will need, oh, we don't need to go past the Rending Mountains. Interesting. So we can fight or seduce or deceive them. Uh, I guess no seduction because we don't have enough grail. The Creeping Breath Curse will want Heart or Grail. We will have both. And finally, the Hidden Doors can be found with Lantern or Knock, of which we have neither. So this is going to take a little bit of a... Oh, wow, sorry. And the High Passes. Okay, uh, so we need basically everything. <laughs> um, fun. Uh, that's going to take a lot of money, too. This and many more obstacles will be coming in the next episode of... <laughs> Lord Percival Stab, the physician. This is the first episode of the new year. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to try and uh, be a little more diligent, especially at the end of the year. I have found it quite difficult to get episodes recorded on time. I'm recording them closer and closer to the time that they go live, which I also realize will sometimes create quality problems for those of you that like watching uh, early on. And of course, this time I didn't manage my time well because it's later, although people tend to complain less when the... Uh, you know, when the, the episodes are longer. So, um, for those of you who are familiar with the series and are already sub subbed and followed and are liking and all of that, I do appreciate it. Again, I, I like seeing your comments. Um, I like getting the feedback and um, it does help me get noticed. For those of you who are not yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so or otherwise sharing it out. Uh, I am always looking to grow. I'm always looking to share this with more people. Uh, and I do read all of the comments and try to respond to the ones that, uh, well, the ones that, that are good spirited and, and, you know, I have, have something to say too. But until Friday, uh, have a good one.